Uh, okay, uh, let's call this meeting to order. <laughs> it is uh, 1 o'clock Tuesday afternoon, November 26th, the beginning of the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call for this. I'm here. Commissioner Stacy. Here. Commissioner Here. Okay, let's uh, sign the journal. And is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Seconded. Okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. All right, the minutes are approved. We'll suspend the old new business for now and uh, move right to Mr. Zimmerman. We've had enough of him Thank today. You. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's work to be done. So um, I wanted to give you an update on uh, some issues with the uh, county sewer district. I'd come and talk to you uh, as things go on. Uh, several issues, not issues necessarily, but things I'd want to bring up. Uh, first off, uh, uh, we had talked that... Uh, uh, U.S. 223 and 224 sewer system uh, at Hammer Heinzman sewer system and Honey Creek were all combined into a single fund. Um, I have worked with uh, regional planning and we are getting those broken out uh, and we'll have monies assigned to those individual sewer systems. So every sewer, just, every sewer system will have its own numbers. Mm -hmm. um, we had talked also that uh, as far as collection for Hammer Heinzman, what I've done thus far uh, is uh, shows that they have been paying a, a, a share that exceeds currently what we have been using at Hammer Heinz been enough that um, I would like to give them a, a holiday um, if so it be said that uh, their last quarter of 2013 which we build in January of 2014 um, would essentially be a zero um, we won't build them we'll bill them but it'll be a zero amount um, that way we are not collecting so much funds uh, you know, having these funds built up so high that we don't need that money. Um, there's always need to have funds in reserve, um, but from what I'm looking at thus far is that we've collected enough from Hammer Heinzman that if we give them a, a quarter off, it's not going to hurt the books as far as Hammer Heinzman goes. So um, that should be, not, it will be um, uh, reflected on their January bill for the last quarter of 2013. And a little explanation. For and a little explanation of why, right? Okay. That it's not a, a permanent thing, you know, and as we evaluate more, um, we may be able to reduce their rates. Um, you know, that is one exception to all of our sanitary systems that uh, there are enough users on a very small and completely paid for system that we don't need to be collecting probably as much as we've been collecting in the past on, on that particular sewer system. Um, we do recognize that because it is so old, um, we do more maintenance on it than most, but maintenance is cheap compared to, you know, paying off a $4 million note um, like we're looking at doing in Bascom. Um, so that's where we are with that. As far as New Regal sewer system goes, we continue to uh, learn and struggle with that system. Um, I do not have the uh, final numbers for what we are looking at for new assessments, but beyond a doubt, assessments will have to go up um, in uh, New Regal. Uh, more than likely, it'll be the first quarter of 13, so it wouldn't be until March um, that those would be realized. By the time I get all those numbers done, I'd, I'd like to do it once and be done with it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> on that note, uh, Fred and I had talked uh, about New Regal system oh, several months ago uh, about uh, some of the users and the, the equity of their charges, um, not necessarily complaints by, by owners, but um, questions as to whether or not the numbers and, and the EDUs, the equivalent dwelling units that they were being charged was uh, equitable. Um, Fred had contacted uh, RCAP, the Rural uh, Community Assistance Partnership. Uh, they do provide uh, free of charge a, a, an assessment for uh, uh, sewer systems. Uh, and they did come in <clears throat> and uh, I think you all have uh, a copy of this, and you can have mine when you're done if you'd like. Um, if there aren't any other ones, I, I don't necessarily need this information. Right now I can get a copy from Fred, or actually I have, a, I think, an email of it. Um, they did do an evaluation of some of the larger users. They didn't go person to person. You know, most people are being charged one EDU. Mm -hmm. uh, but did look at the uh, Neuro Cafe, the school, Paul's Market, All Saints Parish, Bubby's. Um, the uh, three apartment complex that is next to the post office, the Moose, Sonny Jackson, the American Legion. 
um, which are the uh, more commercial size units um, in, in, in New Rigel. Um, and they do have some recommendations for changes uh, based upon the meter usage. Uh, we no longer read meters. Uh, we don't read meters in any of our systems. Um, but before we took the system over, New Rigel was metered uh, and you know there, there was data there. They do have recommendations on uh, changing uh, for instance, uh, uh, actually not necessarily changing all of them, but uh, Sunny Jacks, uh, for instance, is, is uh, being assigned currently three EDUs. They are recommending that it be remain at three EDUs uh, based on the usage. American Legion uh, is assigned three EDUs, but their usage uh, is less than, um, uh, significantly less than that and is equal to what a single uh, landowner would be or one EDU and so the recommendation is to drop them to one. Similar recommendations for instance Paul Market to go from six EDUs to three. Um, I'm not sure where that six was. That was part of it. the original. All these numbers were based on original council um, uh, a council resolution or I don't know if they do resolutions or whatever council does uh, for approving these. Uh, but now that it's our system you know we have the the freedom to modify them as we, we need. Um, I don't necessarily propose we, we look at doing this on a regular basis um, by any means, but uh, there were some, some concerns and these ones were looked at. Um, so the upside for those residents or those, those uh, businesses is that their EDUs would of course drop. Uh, the downside is that there is X amount of money out there that has to be paid for, uh, which means if we drop uh, somebody that you know is rate then somebody else or the rest of the community pays for it. Um, there's not this magic pot of money that you know we just magically get to, to draw the from. Total, so, excuse me, the total cost of the system remains unchanged. How that's broken down to individuals is based on their the usage. EDU of whatever recap is assessed that unit, but the total cost to operate the system remains the same. That, that's correct, right. Um, so th as far as that goes, um, I, th this is really, I think the first time that, uh, uh, well, this is the first time that we have dealt with this type of issue, which is why I wanted to bring it to the board. Um, I am your sewer manager, but I don't, I don't want to, uh, overstep my, um, authority. Um, you know, if we have some small rate changes, some of this, some of that, I can under, you know, I think you would want me just to deal with those so that to bother you. But you know, changing physical EDUs from what they were, um, because these EDUs, are, the original ones, are what we mm -hmm. use for bonding, uh, for uh, um, uh, John. Is that right? Yep. John. Uh, Mark, um, if I may ask, were the first EDUs based on estimates? It, 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 it's all based on estimates. And this yeah. here is based on more factual. That is correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. Be, yeah. Before our systems ever designed no idea what usages are so everything is based on the green book um there are uh ohio epa and us epa put out estimates for uh usage um schools for instance uh churches with this much seating on average put out this much restaurants put out this much bars put out this much um uh, clubs like the american legion put out and those estimates were all are all what was used um so the, these are not great huge changes by any means it's not like it's going to raise people's hundreds and hundreds of dollars it's a dollar you know at, at the most per quarter um more troubling though um than that is on the the bottom side which is on the page four uh which is what we uh knew and and has suspected all along although i still struggle and and with what to do about it is that the, the last good data we have as far as uh, meter readings versus being billed. Uh, and we know that uh, currently our by far largest uh, uh, cost to the system is, is treatment from the city of Faustoria. And as those rates continue to rise, every extra gallon of water that goes through the system, whether it's sanitary waste or not sanitary waste, costs the residents of Nurgle a great deal of money. That. Uh, if you look, the, the metered um, cubic feet, that, that's 100 cubic feet, a, a CCF, uh, 100 cubic feet of material, is that you can see that at, as we go through the system that in January we metered 650 
uh, 100, roughly 650, 100 cubic feet. We were billed for a little over 1,100. Um, the total meter readings uh, in December of 2011, uh, 580, uh, 100 cubic feet. Uh, billed for 1,937, uh, well over three, almost four times uh, the volume we're being, we're paying for compared to what the meters are saying people are using. Um, Largely, um, I suspect because of uh, uh, infiltration to the system, uh, and I, I don't want to say necessarily illegal taps, but you know, the INI, the taps that aren't supposed to be in it, uh, roof drains, subsurface drains, uh, tile systems that may have been tapped into it, storm drains that may have been tapped into it, uh, sump pumps, downspouts, um, breaks in the system. Um, that system was plagued with uh, design uh, and, and, and construction problems uh, from the day it was installed. Um, and we don't currently read meters, so it, it's hard to get a, 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 a feeling for where it is today. But if this is where we were in 2011, uh, things don't fix themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that as well as I do. Mark, if I can ask a question. Are these the build CFS, CCF, is that at the Fostoria plant? What I understand, a new Rigo has a meter as it exits the city, and then Fostoria has a meter as it enters. No, there, there's no entry meter. There's no meter that enters the system. In it, okay. So um, the meter have, is at the exit. Right, we have, we have a meter uh, at each of our pump stations. Um, we have a pump station half, basically halfway between Natasha for 108 between uh, Nurigal and, and Faustoria. Um, th those are the meters that are read uh, by, by the city uh, of Faustoria for, for billing. Um, once it gets to Faustoria, it just dumps into a, it dumps into a manhole there and that's where it, it's treated. Our force main from uh, the 10-inch force main that goes from Nurigal to uh, Faustoria uh, is not tapped anywhere. Um, and it is a welded, high-pressure system. Mm -hmm. um, if it had a leak somewhere, it would either be blowing into somebody's house that they illegally tapped or it would literally be blowing out of the ground. Um, it's got that much pressure on it. So um, our problem does not exist between New Regal and Faustoria. It exists in, in New Regal mm -hmm. is where the, this extra usage is coming from. Um, what you do about it, I don't say you as the three of you, but what we do about it, I, I don't know. That sewer system is 20 plus feet deep, uh, going right down the middle of the roads. Um, already hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, we just approved a, we didn't approve, but got uh, approval for uh, the village to uh, uh, pave uh, through uh, OPWC funds, um, which means they'll have another layer of asphalt on top of it, which, you know, you start digging stuff up, you get huge costs. Um, so we can continue to, to look at this and, and specifically uh, what I'd recommend is kind of looking at uh, um, adding all these EDUs together, seeing what our base usage is. Um, we, there's no way we should be four times higher yeah. Yeah. without can, a, a big break in the system. Can you run a pig through there? And we can, but once again, that is uh, uh, a, a lot of, the, yes, that is probably the best thing to do. We, we do, and the sewer district trip part in uh, uh, paying for the uh, camera that we jointly share between my department, the sewer district, and soil and water conservation. Um, and you know we can run the, the camera through the system to see uh, if we can find any major breaks uh, in the system. And that's probably the best thing to do um, when we have some, you know, maybe next spring or, or, or summer when we have better, better weather. So, um, <clears throat> but I wanted to, uh, uh, bring you up to date on where we were with the sewers, um, specifically with this RCAP uh, 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 report that was done. Um, and I don't know that it's something that you necessarily need, it, it's up to you, of course, if you want to have a resolution on changing these, or if you just want to authorize me to change them as, you know, as, as they are needed to be done, I'm more than happy to do that. Like I said, I just wanted to share this with mm -hmm. you. Um, I don't want to, once He's, again, overstep, so. What's the feelings of the board? Uh, it's not, I, it doesn't. It's not a contract of any kind, right? It's just no. Know, it is not. Yeah. It's just it's a, it's a change of EDUs, um, which is within the realm of a sewer district manager. 
but not necessarily, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do it, I would assume, at the same time you adjust the rate. The, I would do it at the same time, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, good. Yeah. I, if, since the first one, the EDU w was established based on an estimate, and this is stays, this is based on more factual information. I would suggest that uh, that we either make a um, whatever you call the thing to authorize you to make the adjustment to what the more factual information is with the EDU. Yeah. Now, on on saying that, I didn't realize that there was such a loss within the system I think we need to put as a priority next spring and kind of maybe hold back on the pavement in New Rigel until we run a pig through there and find out if there is some major some a couple areas with some major leaks in because again three times what the usage is for billing that's that's exorbitant right and so again just to repeat myself I would make the recommendation that that you readjust Based on the actual information of the of the recap, and that we put as a we pro we postpone any paving until well, after yeah. we we have no nothing to do with the paving. I mean, it's not our project. We Jeff that kind of outside the realm of this, but Jeff and I serve on the Ohio Public Works Commission board. They put an application in. They got awarded that money. Um, that project is between the state of Ohio and, and the village of New Regal, and it has to be done within a certain period of time. So we can certainly, and it, it wouldn't be until next summer, mm -hmm. late anyhow. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can get some we'll of that done. Um, yeah, we definitely get yeah. run but, a test for the system right. and get any repairs made before we well, they, they pay. May, mm -hmm. We could try. It's yeah. it's an extensive sanitary system. It is not going to be a day or two or days or a week of running a thing. I mean, it's an extensive sanitary system. Mm -hmm. So okay. that we don't even necessarily really know where. Yeah things are so but I want to share that with you I mean if I, I don't know that I need a resolution if you want mm -hmm. me just to handle it it, it sounds like the board is okay with yeah, making those changes okay absolutely uh, then I'll just whatever changes uh, are necessary that's fine and the, when I get my new numbers done for the first quarter of, of 14 I will be back to share those with you okay before we do them so you're not getting phone calls without knowing what's going on right. for all of our districts and this will just be incorporated into that so yeah. Yeah. Um, so I can share all that information with you again okay. um, but I like to come every once in a while and, yeah. and share where we are with the sewers anyhow so, so you're getting some nice phone calls from Hammer Heinzman and some yeah, it's exactly, and, and they will be equally Either matched out. by the the, the ones for the folks in New Riggle that aren't. There's so more happy. residents in New Riggle than what there is in Hammer Heights, yeah. but yes. so the yeah. negatives are going to yeah. outweigh them. Yeah. <laughs> Positives don't always call. Yeah. 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 We just do what we can do, so yep. you know it's, that's our challenge. So, um, other than that, have a happy Thanksgiving, and so <laughs> great. So before you leave, you uh, done with your. I am sewer? okay. Before you leave, I just want to bring up a couple of things. These are old business, but since you're you're here I wanted to mention this issue one thing as well Mark and I were privileged to go to Mansfield on Friday and vote on the issue one awards for this coming year and Seneca County was fortunate to have four projects that were above the line that were are going to be funded next year the commissioners applied on behalf of the townships this township road paving project and Tanya actually wrote the grant for them uh, covers 14 of the 15 townships mm -hmm. will get some road paving 466,000 in grant they will receive. The city of Faustoria for a water line project will receive 65,500 in grant and an equal amount in 0% loan. The county engineer's office for road paving various roads will receive 394,000 for uh, in, in a grant. And then the village of New Riggle, as you talked about that project for paving Perry and Tiffin Street, 125,000 in grant money. So it's a little over a million, a million fifty thousand in grant money, and 65,000 plus for loan money. In addition to that, Jackson Township is just below the line for a small paving project. If these other projects, top 30 some projects, come in a little less, or somebody doesn't do one, Jackson could likely move up. And the Attica project, Attica Wastewater Treatment, did not fare well in the scoring, but it was referred by our committee in, in uh, Mansfield to Columbus for a separate pot of money called the Small 
small government commission program. Is that correct? So we don't know how they'll fare there, but we did make them one of our priorities as a district, as District 16, so they get some extra points because we made them a priority. So I thought that was pretty good news, and appreciate Mark uh, driving down there. A few scary moments. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you drove with me. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then one other thing while you're here, uh, I, I mentioned to Mark about the uh, cemetery. Well, I had it, the um, the farmer call me this week. He's harvesting corn out there at the county home, and he said, "Well, that driveway's kind of tore up, um, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to get blamed for it because I'm bringing corn in and out there too." I said, "We know it's torn up." Um, in, in discussing that situation with Mark, he, we thought if our maintenance could perhaps go in and just take out some of those muddy spots, uh, he would be willing to donate some fill and actually tailgate it in the holes for us. If, if that's he can't really use his equipment for really was really a non-engineer's mm -hmm. duty but he would donate the, the aggregate if we could have the maintenance go in with just their loader and kind of peel some of that mud out of those low spots can we have uh, instead of the maintenance can we have uh, uh, Bill Huckleberry and the Sheriff Huckleberry and the prisoners do some of that versus putting the added burden on mm -hmm. our maintenance department we could they couldn't run the tractor though we've got a tractor with a loader that I was thinking they could maybe just oh. scoop it and then dump it out in the field spread it a little bit in the field if we don't have the prisoner shovel at all I mean that would be an option but wherever's the easiest thing. yeah so you can check with Dean on that I don't okay. know if it's something they could do now or not or if the ground's getting too too hard and frozen and soft when it's not frozen I, I'm not sure okay that's Thank you. Great. We appreciate your. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. And, and I'll be the rest of the day. So if you want to come. Uh, well, congratulations on your bridge. Thank you. Yeah, and we did open our bridges. All four of our federal bridges are open. So good. good. Thanks. <laughs> All right. And before we get into regular business, Julie, do you want to go next? You don't have to hang around the whole time. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I don't know if this falls under old business, new business, but I appreciate you taking me now. Um, I would just like res to respectfully request that the board. Uh, commissioners um, do a resolution or that a resolution be adopted confirming or reaffirming the two pictometry agreements that were signed by me as auditor. I made the decision to take advantage of new technology called pictometry uh, 100. It provides 100 users the ability to log in and access pictometry posted aerial imagery. The vendor pictometry was offering a special 50% savings if we entered into the agreement before the product was delivered. And that means the aerials that the commissioners contracted to be flown in 13, but they executed it in 12. So if we had um, this agreement signed before the deliverable, we could save 50%. Um, and that would save the county $4,500. So that's why this occurred. So, um, in referencing, this agreement was signed several months ago. I have been in contact with the prosecutor to review this agreement as to form. And this expenditure is being made from the REA funds. For the ORC, this is an acceptable, acceptable expenditure. That's hard to acceptable. say. <laughs> <laughs> acceptable yeah. expenditure of the REA funds. Uh, this is a tool that's used by the auditor to assess properties. And it's one of the, it's a, a big tool that can be used in, as, in the duties as assessor. Mm -hmm. Because this licensure allowed for 100 users, we were able to offer law enforcement and public service um, or public safety access to this data at no cost to their department or entity. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think that should be a problem. That was kind of normal procedure. We just kind of got the cart before yeah, the Yeah, they're out of sequence, so I would just ask that you would consider it. I'm presenting today because I don't know if I'll be available next week to present at that board meeting, okay. but wanted to bring it to your attention and, and hopefully have a resolution prepared for that time. Yeah. Does the board have any issues with doing that? No, no whatsoever. Okay. It'll just be an, uh, an amendment and acknowledge retro. And I talked to the vendor in there. They're, they're, they value us as customers, so there was no issue on their end. Okay. We can even just do it retroactive to that day because the board at that time approved the project as a whole, so Correct. there was no no issues. It was just one paper that got signed. Yep. Okay. So. Okay, we'll take care of that next week when we have the... Okay. Just get Nikki the date and the project name so we can put it in the title. And the resolution. Okay. Great.
Very good. Thank you. All right. Yep. Thanks for coming thanks. over. Okay, now we're ready for old business. I did my two pieces of old business. Um, Mrs. Wilson, do you have any? Old business. I We finally got a quote from a company out of Akron for the um, recycled cemetery sign, Seneca County Home Cemetery, that we wanted to put out front. Mm -hmm. Basically, the big white sign that's out front of that building, there's a couple that obviously scat's gone that mm -hmm. we can replace, and I think there was there was a dog warden has a different sign, so we mm -hmm. could potentially put it there as well. Um, the company we usually use that was local no longer does them, so we finally found one that was it was out of Akron. Um, got a quote back. Looks exactly like what we have out there. Total cost is um, a little over twelve hundred dollars, and like, that would be all recycled content. It follows our. Um, 25 percent recycled content in it. Didn't know if you wanted to. Uh, it was. I assumed you wanted to move on with it because you were looking at getting it done, but we couldn't get it done and before the. So this will be totally reimbursed by OSS then. Yes. Well, it comes off of our amount. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't have a problem doing that. Do the, no, I don't. Are the other ones on that recycled content too? Yeah. That's on that sign. Yeah, yes. That's on that yep. One. Yep, the same exact color. I was say, otherwise, this was gonna hold up. And those are <laughs> no. It's exact same, exact same color, same. And uh, apparently, all we did at the the one before, because we thought those were separate squares, and here, there's just kind of a square sitting on top of the other piece that was perfectly cut in there, because oh. they're not each separate. So oh, they are connected, but it's yeah. But they only have to do one. The new one. Yep. Mm -hmm. As long as we get the right size, you couldn't even tell until you get right up to the sign and. Hey, that's sticking out a little bit. We so. definitely need to take scats down anyway yes. because it's confusing people drive back there. Yep. Yeah. And that could be a way to, instead of cutting it out, we can just put cemetery sign in there over it and oh, okay. put it in there so it's, okay. if that's okay. We'll I seen something earlier this week. I thought that OSS, do they a lot funds to us every year? Because I thought that I said $35,000 was left in that fund. Does that mean at the end of the year it's gone no. and next year they give you a new fund okay. or is this just... I, I was at the budget meeting on Monday and they have, um, we get like 18 months to use it and our res our paving project hasn't come out of that yet. That's right. what I confirmed when I got back to okay. and asked it on that. Now when so that's gone, do they replenish it then? We 50, we're, we're in line to get a 50 in next year's budget. It has to be approved when we have the next yeah. OSS meeting. We vote on the OSS budget, and in the budget, fifty thousand is allotted again yeah, this year. Is what so. we recommend. Okay, to be and, in the and we're not even spending that; we're close to that. Uh, well, we pretty well yeah, use it we up, use it and up. we would have spent it this year, but the bids came in higher than we anticipated for the CSB lots. So we'll rebid it this winter, have it ready to go by the spring. So we'll 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 get Some that Some years spent. we carry a little over, but yep. then we spend it the next year. It just depends what projects come up. It's okay. a nice it, little pot to use for. Yeah, and, and these are funds that are generated from uh, uh, sand land. I think that's what they from the from sunny the farms. sunny farms. Sunny farm. Sunny farms. Yeah. From the sand land. Sunny the garbage dumps. Yeah. yeah. Sunny farms and the one in Ottawa County, whatever that's called, BFI, was yeah. very single. Vickery, the Vickery one. Well, Vickery is the deep well injection. I don't think yeah, there's anything not, from that. Yeah, that's not mine. Up in, in is it Port Clinton? I don't know somewhere right. up there they have the yeah. uh, the other one. They charge fees. For people that dump stuff there, and then these fees go in where they can then off, offer right. the the three counties. Mm -hmm. uh, they're supposed to promote and recycling okay. and, and, okay. um, and various things. Yeah, so I say the health departments are getting a little the bit of stuff they yeah. do, and yeah, and monitoring. Yeah. Okay. Anything else in the world? Um, this could be old, no old or new. I think we got an email from the um, regional planning requesting to do the sewer district, uh, not the management part, but billing. the administration and billing part. And um, uh, we've got it typed back up and got some clerical typos fixed. Um, just checking to see if the board wants us to move forward with drafting it up and doing another three years. Um, I think that's what she's... Staying the same otherwise, other than the corrections. Yeah, she, yeah, she didn't ask me for okay. an increase or... Um, she just asked, if, and she said she was interested in still doing it, so um, we can draft that what's, up. And what's the wishes of the board? Is, is this the this contract, the current contract that hasn't expired or is about to expire? About to is expire. that the first that regional planning was doing that for the county? 
I don't know when they took that over. It was no. when I was gone. Yeah, we had that when um, Paul Harrison was here. Okay. And he okay. did a lot of the, all of the sewer district stuff. Um, we had a contract with them. There was some provisions that weren't in the contract. So this was redone in 2010. So this is a new drawn out contract that we did in 2010. But previous, they were uh, doing it as well under Paul Harrison. Okay. When I left here in 2002, the commissioners were still billing, I think. Or maybe they had just given it to regional planning. I'm not sure. Um, but at one time, the was. commissioners billed, but then it was just Hammer Heinzman and yeah. um, maybe Honey Creek. I'm not sure. It was very small. Yeah, it keeps growing. <laughs> and now it's of New Rigo, Hammer Heinzman, Honey Creek, so it's much larger. I, I make a recommendation that we just uh, continue on with the contract to regional planning. Okay. I think yeah. it's just too large mm -hmm. for this office here anymore. Yeah, okay. I'm kind of that. You're okay with that? Okay, whatever. I'll draft it up and yep. get it ready. Um, the only other old business, I do have a resolution for that. Uh, um, for the airport, the uh, appraisals. I um, wanted to bring that up under old business uh, for the properties, the Tice property appraisal that Brad was asking about. So I'd like to do a supplemental appropriations for the airport's contract service line for 1500 so he can go ahead and get the appraisal ordered. Okay, now we need a motion for that? Yep. Okay. This is, a, this is old business, right? Yep. I'll, I'll move. Second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? This is the thing that Brad talked to us about. Week, yeah, weeks, yeah. Weeks, yeah. Weeks. yeah, just just for clarification, this is uh, to abide by FAA rules and uh, what they call one in seven foot obstruction. What that means is from the center of the runway out, you're allowed every seven foot, you're allowed one foot obstruction, uh, obstruction, 14 foot, two feet, 21 feet, three feet, and this house is one of the houses that's still in that obstruction but this should allow us to abide by FAA they continue to change the rules but should allow us to abide by FAA for a number of years because I've had a couple calls on that I think that there's more properties and the reason we want to abide by FAA if we want further money from FAA to extend the runways or make some improvements out there they come back to us and they say well if we abided by their regulations, the current regulations, before we ask them for more money. So it's kind of a snowball effect. You know, we got to do what they want to do if they want us to, if we want them to do what we want to do. But at this point, this is the last house. Now, not to say that, that there are other ones that are close to that, and if FAA adjusts their regulations, that it may encompass more houses. And FAA gives us the, the resources to buy the houses if that's elected to do, but right now it's just the one that falls in that area. And right now it's just an appraisal, not, yes. a, not a purchase. Or yes, a yes. Or and it's not going to be a hostile situation is what I understand what's happened in the past. It's a willing, willing seller. seller there. Okay. Anything? Oh, oh, wait, we didn't vote on that yet, did we? Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Zoller? Yes. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Anything else, Mrs. Um, just a thought, the end of the year is coming and the cost savings plan that we did uh, for this year was only for a one year period and wanting to uh, know, I mean, it wasn't real successful this year, didn't really have hardly any applications for it, wanting to know if, you, if we're going to look towards next year of doing it again because we have to do the policies again since we did only do it for one year mm -hmm. um, you know answer today just thoughts mm -hmm. that it's coming the end of the year's mm -hmm. coming and we don't I don't know if you mm -hmm. want to do it next year or not there's basically what I understand there was roughly twenty five thousand dollars that's in that cost save twenty six thousand in that cost savings program that was non county money that uh, was used as a as a incentive for employees in the county to come up with suggestions to save the county money. Now, to date, that has not been utilized. There hasn't been any uh, recommendations that have brought forth savings to the county. So there's that $25,000 pool in there that is 
again, it will it will go over the general funds at the end of the year. Now, if that will be continued next year or not, I think we need to reevaluate that as commissioners and see what we want to do. But uh, um, I would make a recommendation that since the funds are really not county money, that we look at that as an option to maybe take some of those funds and offer that as a somewhat of a minor bonus or a Christmas type bonus for county employees that so we're not taking general fund money we're taking this money that was donated on the outside um, that we utilize that as a as a appreciation for county employees and, and offer that in some sort of um, Christmas type bonus okay. so we need to discuss that as a in the, in the coming weeks or so, so we can resolve that. Okay. Okay. Anything okay. else? Nope. How did you have any old business? I did not. Okay, uh, I'm waiting for you because you have lots of stuff, Nikki. Nope. Okay. Let's Mine's new business. Oh, yours is new business. That's oh, okay. Well, great. <laughs> new stuff. Okay. New business. That's new business. I have bill vouchers 36, 136 through 140. I have an appropriation adjustment to be made to the EMA Fund 102, moving $170.45 from supplies to salaries, $500 from equipment to salaries, $500 from travel to salaries, uh, $500 from advertising to salaries, $800.22 from workers' comp to salaries, and $100 from flex spend to salaries. Just wasn't appropriated enough at the beginning of the year's budget. Uh, total move two thousand five hundred seventy dollars and sixty seven cents. I have an appropriation adjustment for the delinquent care and custody fund one fifty nine, moving eight dollars from salaries to transfers out three hundred three dollars and seventy seven cents from supplies to transfers out seven thousand thirty dollars and fifteen cents from equipment to transfers out three dollars and seventy cents from contract repairs to transfers out. Uh, $3,033.68 from contract services to transfers out, $60.36 from travel to transfers out, $951.69 from other expense to transfers out, and $62.66 from Medicare to transfers out for a total of $11,454.01. I have a supplement to the permit appropriations for the delinquent care and custody grant fund 159, putting an additional $57,260.26 into their transfers outline, and then they're transferring it to the um, new fund for the new year, uh, 159 to the 162. It's just they switch numbers for different grant years. So the 68000 $714.27 will be moved from 159 to the 162. I have a supplemental decrease to the permit appropriations for the soil and water fund, 042, reducing equipment by 8,000, uh, contract repairs by 2,000, advertising by $1,400. Uh, cost allocation, $3,535.45. And workers comp eight hundred and two dollars and fifteen cents for a total reduction is fifteen thousand seven hundred and thirty seven dollars and sixty cents they're just decreasing it for the end of the year uh, reductions to put it back into their account um, i have a resolution authorizing an appropriation adjustment within the community housing improvement program 157 Moving $42.58 from salaries to other expense. I have a resolution authorizing an appropriation adjustment within the general fund. Moving $2,500 from contract services to supplies. This is at the request of um, Common Place 2. I have a resolution authorizing a fund advance to the Wolf Creek Petition Ditch Fund 063. Um, we have uh, for our advances out general fund 15000 to the 
063 advances in because we're not collecting on that we needed we still need to pay for the funds we're going to have the obviously the mailer mm -hmm. again so how, how much is that again roughly through that mailer the first one was what'd you figure 22,000 22,000 change <laughs> in a second one it'll probably Hopefully be not as much yeah because we can eliminate fostory if we fostory we can do just one now right it'll just yeah. be, we'll just stuff all that in one envelope and i'm trying to condense the ones if they're on the list twice and i know it's the same name same person coming up same address i'll put those in the same envelope instead of mailing it twice right. to the same person because of all the two thousand dollars of registered right. mail mm -hmm. yeah that was supplies the envelopes in the wow yeah. so that'll that cost will come up again yep. okay so I have a, an appropriation adjustment for the public assistance fund 030 moving four hundred thirteen dollars and seventy four cents from other expense to supplies one thousand eighteen dollars and eighty two cents from contract services to supplies total move one thousand four hundred thirty two dollars and fifty six cents we have a supplement to the permit appropriations to the Child Support Enforcement Agency Fund, 019, putting $2,000 into their other expense. I have an appropriation adjustment within the general fund, moving $20,000 uh, from salaries on the jail side, no, roadside to the jail side um, for the sheriff and $2,000 from salaries to salaries. Again, the second salaries is for the courthouse security. The first one is from his... his Regular payroll. Yes, yep. <laughs> so he's not asking for anything additional. So that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a supplement to the permit appropriation for the general fund, um, putting $45,000 into the state admin fees for the sales tax and homestead tax. Good news is sales tax is up. Bad news is we have to pay them back the state admin fee. Um, the auditor is at, asked for it's about a month or two ago additional 40. We're getting an additional uh, request for 45,000, and they said they thought that would get us through the rest of the year. So they give us all the tax and all the fees, and then we have to give them the fees fees back. I don't know why they just don't keep it. But <laughs> that's how they do it? What's the net? So far that we've paid this year? No, the, the net of, of what we receive versus what we have to pay back. Um, so far the year we've paid 100 and if we do the 45, that would be 180. I think we've paid back this year on sales tax because we had 100 appropriated at the beginning of the year. 40 we increased a couple months ago in this 45. And if we get approximately 7 million, I don't know what percent that yeah, would be. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. exactly what that, because the percent always, we tried to calculate it so we could plan for next year's, but the percentage keeps, it's around 6, six 7% is what we were trying to what figure out. What the state out. gets in the reimbursement or of our sales tax that we get, they get a percentage of that. Mm -hmm. Always got the grubby hands and sell it. And you can print that. <laughs> and they collect it, and then they send it to us, and then we have to send back the fee. Seems like a little extra well, step unnecessarily, but we do it. I might be afraid they might not send, take too much out. Yeah, something. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a resolution authorizing the Seneca County Board of Commissioners to sign a satisfaction satisfaction of mortgage for. Uh, Richard Switzer for the Satisfaction Mortgage Loan with the Seneca County Commissioners for work done through the Community Housing Improvement Program uh, FY11 Home Funds. Receipt of a check, the amount of 4672 which will completely satisfy the obligation. Um, I have another resolution. This was I brought up last week the termination of the agreement of the lease and master lease purchasing and sublease purchasing agreement with Good Shepherd Homes. Uh, Alex Burlingham from uh, John Larson's firm, Squires & Sanders, reviewed this and um, said all the, all the T's were crossed and as were dotted. So he said we can proceed with that. They're going to move forward with, I think they're going to use a Fostoria 
to continue that. Okay. And I have one more that I added. Um, I have an auth authorizing the contract with Lowe's for the construction of overhangs at the dog warden's office and authorizing Stacy Wilson as county administrator to sign. Kelly's putting some um, little awnings or overhangs over her runs outside to help with the snow building up in there. So, and I think that's all we have. Okay, is there a motion? Yes. Okay, is there a second? <laughs> yes. You think I'm sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. Yeah, I'd like to at least make it uh, public that the Wolf Creek, uh, the funds that are spent for the uh, roughly twenty thousand dollars for the mailing, if if the Wolf Creek is affirmed, that cost goes in the cost of the of the assessments and will be paid by the landowners. If we deny or throw out the ditch hearing, the net cost is comes out of the general fund. Is that a correct statement? If, okay. if it's denied, then we have the option of billing it back um, at, at, per the same way that Mark gave us the uh, okay. breakdown. Okay. Okay. Or we could okay. eat it, yeah. which so, I, I, it's a lot to eat. It really, that 20000 doesn't, is That's all the taxpayers in Seneca County are not going to have to pay that. Right, right. right. Seems yes. insane. $20,000 twice. Twice plus all of the other, you know, I don't know, there's a lot not, of other things. But, but they're, they're not going certified mail, are they? Yes. yes. These they have, have to go to. certified. The last one that we do, if it goes through, the last one with the final assessments and everything, that one can be mailed, regular mail. But this one cannot. If, if they, the law says it, it has to be it's certified cheaper. or Something First class with five day return receipt. Well, that doesn't exist anymore. We checked at the post office. The girls checked and I didn't believe them, so I went and checked myself. And, <laughs> and it doesn't exist maybe anymore. Post, may, maybe the law doesn't exist anymore. Well, the, the law just hasn't caught up with the post office rules. You yeah. know, so there's really only one option to certified mail. And so Which you can't, is so can't do exciting a printing of the paper or anything. <laughs> yeah. It's cheaper to print the paper, but you can't do that. It doesn't meet the law. No, no we still have to print it in paper. Oh, we get to do both. Oh, yes. yeah. We have to do both. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to do print one publication of the paper. Yes, and it'll be on a Sunday. It's like the Sunday two weeks before the meeting. So. And I don't know if that bet be Tiffin or Foster's paper because it's. We do it in Tiff. We've done it in Tiffin because okay. the largest circulation okay. of local newspapers or something in Seneca okay. County. By the time okay. this is done, me and Stacy are going to be able to just flip <laughs> them out. Yeah, okay. read the whole thing. Stacy. I hope not. <laughs> Stacy and you. What? He's an English major. Yeah, not me and Stacy. It's that Stacey we got some teachers in the crowd here and some, some English majors. So correct us. Okay, let's see. Did we vote on this? No, we did. Let's do a roll call vote. Mr. Zoller? Yes. Mr. Stacy? Yes. Mr. Wagner? Yes. Okay, now other new business. And the other thing I have is, uh, I'll let you guys finish, but I have a executive session I've got two pending litigations and, and uh, personnel um, okay. disciplinary to discuss with you today today okay uh, how are you having I have nothing. Okay. nothing okay we're ready for here we come <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I typically don't like to answer letters to the editor and so forth but I want to make this uh, a public announcement here. There was a letter that stated that uh, that the commissioners have authorized four hundred thirty-five thousand dollars for the study of a joint justice center. That is absolutely not correct. The NCOR, the old Kroger store. Let's just keep it simple. Has applied for a grant for one hundred thousand dollars. It was granted by the state of Ohio to do a study on. A, the city doing a justice center to make them compliant and to build a justice center. B, the county building the justice center and being compliant with all governmental regulations. C, looking at the possibility and the cost of combining the city and the county justice center. D, looking at existing county facilities and see if they can be revamped to
to accommodate our needs and make us compliant with all legal, all um, legalities, you know. So that was the purpose, and it was a $100,000 grant. To say that that uh, it did not come a dime from taxpayers' money is not correct, but it did not come a dime from general fund money. It was a grant from the government, for from the state, for $100,000 that was applied by the old Kroger store to conduct this study. And... Uh, there were in the final stages of the study, and we hope to sometime over the next four to six weeks, probably because of the holidays, it'll be the first of the year, to come out with the results of this, of this study that is performed by a group called Burgess and Nipel. So I wanted to set the, the record straight on that. No county funds money were used for that, and that was a $100,000 grant, not a $435,000 grant. Okay. On, Any on questions? That note, what I'm envisioning, once we get this study given to us, I'm envisioning a joint meeting then between city council and commissioners at some point to say, okay, here's what's been released to us and, and kind of develop a plan. There's really no plan put forth by the city and the county yet, but we went to city council last time. I think this was decided we wanted to do this study. I'm envisioning something like that happening again, but that's yet to be determined. Absolutely. All this is, is going to look at a high level, which makes the most sense, what is an approximate cost, a possibility of how you could put this together, and then at that point we have to get all entities together. We'll certainly want to get public opinion on this process of, of whatever we do. We have to look at the, the driving force behind everything is being compliant with government regulations and costs to the taxpayers. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, I've got so a lot of them. Oh. <laughs> uh, another thing that I would I would like to propose is uh, the the county sub, uh, contributes to SIDEC. In the past it was it contributed uh, twenty four or twenty five thousand, I forget what it is. In later years that was reduced down to seventeen thousand. Uh, as you know, that we're in the process, in the final process of, uh, of uh, appointing or hiring a new executive director uh, in, as Rich Vote retires. The city has uh, increased its contribution to SIDEC from um, 70000 up to, I believe, 80000 or 60000 up to, they've increased it 10000 Ours has reduced through the years from 25 down to 17,000. The Port Authority has contributed 22,000. I would make a proposal that the county increase its contribution, not up to the 25 what it was, but from 17 up to 20. So we would increase it 3,000, which will help. Um, I, I believe we're in a new era here with SIDEC, with a new development director. Um, and I would propose that we would increase our contribution to SIDEC $3,000 from 17 up to 20, which is still under the high point of 25 is what it was a few years ago. That's a recommendation that, I, that I'm making. Okay, the, uh, in a week or so, I don't know, whenever Stacy comes out with her preliminary budget, she will put together, uh, to correct me if I'm wrong, you'll put together a proposed budget based on what people are requesting and mm -hmm. what you feel they should have. And she'll email that to each of us with some comparisons from last year. And then we'll give her input. Well, I want to increase this one. I want to decrease that one. And uh, I think we should all make our various suggestions to her at that time. And there'll probably be three or four versions of that before we're all said and done. And we'll come up with a final product. We ha That's not the only thing we reduced. You know, we, the Fair Board used to get 20000 <laughs> They're down to $2,800 or something like that. Uh, Museum. Museum, museum went from whatever it was, thirty thousand down to zero. So there's a lot of areas where you could increase. So we'll just have to weigh it all out and see where where it all shakes down, and that'll depend on how much we get too. Yeah, right. So yeah. I expect each of us to have to give her input when you get that first version. Give her input. She'll make adjustments, and then we'll give her input again, and she'll have very little hair by the time <laughs> it's all done. Yeah. The, the reason for SIDEC is this is the one that could potentially generate more funds for the county 
through economic development. And so that's I just okay. throw this out for thought uh, for everyone as we come through our budgets. I know there's going to be a lot of nail biting and, and some tense moments, but I think this is this is an option to potentially increase the revenue of the county long term based on the, invest, the investment. Oh, unfortunately, I've, uh, we have another issue that we need to look at is I was made aware of the RTA building. We have a potential health hazard in, uh, through water infiltration through leaking. And uh, the maintenance and I went over, were over there the other day and they showed me in the uh, uh, regional planning office, took out some of the ceiling tile and there was some of the steel girders or whatever they call there's quite a bit of rust on them. But we know that eventually, it, if water gets through, eventually it's gonna deteriorate the, the facility and I don't want another courthouse in 20 years at the RTA building that we got to tear it down because we didn't maintain it. Uh, maintenance has not been able to find the leak as to where it's coming in from and so forth. So um, my suggestion is that we, I don't know who we hire, but we hire someone to to evaluate that if it's those flower boxes on the side or where it's coming in from I don't know but I know that if you got water that's getting into a building eventually it's going to deteriorate it and eventually it could be catastrophic and I don't want to I don't want in 20 years someone say well if we would have maintained the RTA building we wouldn't have to tear it down is, and so this is case number one is this a Current leak? Do they think? Do they think it's still leaking? That building was full uh, from a water yeah. pipe break. From what I understand, is that uh, when they have a high, hard driving rain, that uh, Jill has to put buckets okay, in where the water's pipe. coming through. That tells me that it continues to come through. Okay. So, okay. so, and I know maintenance just they can't find it. So I don't know. I don't know if there's experts on finding it or what but when you got water coming in and you got rusting you got problems we had uh, at the end of last year we had those they have a drainage system that goes in through the buildings you talked about the water pots or the flower pots basically instead of having spouting on the outside it runs through the building and we've had problems with that and uh, we had some issues in julie's office and some of the other offices but we've We've since had a company come in and basically they had to snake it out. Um, we were going to try to bypass it and run the water outside, but there was no kind of economic way to do that. So I don't know if that's going to help or if it's been a problem since this year, but it was at the end of the year we, we were finishing that, that uh, up. So we got that problem new, fixed in Julie's office. Yes, and we got the wall patched up. And um, I didn't I guess know they there was. the windows or something. Or mm -hmm. Yeah. Part of that, and I understand that the the design of the building with the gutters on the inside are not the most desirable. But my contention is, when they built the building, that didn't leak. Right. So there has to be something that's deteriorated through years that has to be fixed. Whatever it is, I'm not an engineer. Or and I didn't know there was a current problem, so yeah, we have yeah. not gotten a work order from. The, so uh, I can't f help fix if I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. suggest maybe as other commissioners and, and Stacy to go over and take a look at it. It's in um, in Jill's office downstairs and get a better understanding. And maybe we have to hire some expert to come in and tell us what, where, when, and how. But I just don't like water inside a building. To me, that's just problems. Can we um, just have? The administrator work with maintenance. Since maintenance is aware of it, have her work with maintenance to see what the best course would be. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine. As long as, long as we move forward to stop the problem, whatever it is. Yeah. Well, we don't want water in a building. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could she just work? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's absolutely fine. I just want to make everyone uh, aware of whether it. they, if they feel somebody needs to look at it that knows more than they do. Okay. Or maybe they figured it out by now and. Just need something to get it fixed. I okay, don't know. I'll check. Okay. Anything else? Ready? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Route 53. Just to give an update is I'm not sure that how many of you mentioned this last week that uh, um, that the contract was awarded. Uh, I, I have been in in uh, in 
in discussions with um, uh, district, is it district two at ODOT and uh, uh, the COG and uh, the DLZ, the consulting company that's gonna do the study. We're gonna reconvene a meeting of the coalition to update them on the process. The process, uh, the study will start in January and they should finish it by July. Uh, but then we're gonna narrow in the scope. And so that whole process, we're gonna get a, have a meeting of the overall coalition, <coughs> hopefully within the next four to six weeks. And then, then reconvene as a smaller group with a, at least one commissioner and one engineer from each one of the four counties um, to uh, narrow the scope in. I've been in consultation with Wyandotte, Seneca, and Sandusky on uh, coming up with their part of the funds for the process that we've appropriated already, our 12,500, and we're, I'm still working on, well, I haven't worked on it yet, but we've got 9,000 of the 12,500, so at some point in the coming months that we'll have to come up with that those funds and okay. i understand that the other three counties are well under their way of gathering a private uh, public partnership for that process there so that's that is moving forward and what we want to do is keep the coalition abreast of what's going on and, and keep them uh, engaged into the whole process and so we're pretty happy good, with that. good. Uh, lastly and just uh just at a minor matter of fact, I got a meeting here in a little bit. Update on the airport project, and, and uh, Brad Newman's kind of in between a rock and a hard place here. Uh, they're trying to, f uh, according to FAA, and where they've taken out some of the trees, he's got a ravine that he's trying to, to fill in, and, and he's got to put some culvert through there. And you've got soil and water and EPA that says he's fine. you got the Army Corps of Engineers that's throwing more roadblocks up against them. Uh, so you got two government agencies that, that can't really agree and you got Mr. Newman in the middle which has stopped the whole process. So uh, we've uh, asked the help of Congressman Jordan and as a matter of fact his aide, we've got a meeting at 2.30 with all those entities to kind of discuss that. Uh, mm -hmm. It just to me it just seems kind of ludicrous when you got Two government agencies that can't agree and you got private individual which is operating a county airport in the middle and mm -hmm. just throwing roadblock after roadblock yeah. in front of them we got to get yeah we, we got to help him get out of those things because it ultimately it, it affects the Seneca County Airport mm -hmm. yeah. so that was more just an update okay great I'll shut great. up that well, that's, fine. That's, fine. that's fine okay we've got executive session is there any public comment before we do that well, thank you very much for coming. Is there a motion to go into executive session for uh, pending litigation and personnel? I mean, personnel isn't the right terminology, but you know what I know we which mean. One okay. All right. All right. I make a vote that we go to executive session. I'll second. Fred, okay. shut up. Uh, roll call, please. Oh, sorry. Commissioner Zoller. Yes. Commissioner Stacy. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. All right. We're in executive at two o four. Where's your meeting at? Holding here.